Okay, now we've got the backup to bring back. Hindquarters disengage both sides and the forequarters both sides. None of it is perfect. We're not aiming for perfect right now. We've got basic communication in place. This is the stage that I would normally inter introduce something like fly spray because I've got enough communication that I can keep him still. I don't try and desensitize a horse to a new stimulus until I've got that communication in place. So I'm going to let him have a look at the fly spray. His nose comes towards it, I'll take it away. Rub with it. If he moves back, I'll move with him. Stand still, I'll take it away. Have a look again. His nose is the other way, I'll just keep it close to him until he touches his nose towards the spray bottle. That's the subtler side of the desensitizing. Um, once I start, I've got to keep rhythm with the trigger spray until he stands still and tolerates it. So I'll come in and I'll start somewhere innocuous like his shoulder. Where, I'm not going to try and start on his neck where he thinks he's going to get it in the face. So I'm going to start the shoulder and just four sprays. Starts moving, I'll go with him. Stand still, I'll release. Okay, back to the shoulder. He moves. I move with him and keep the spray on. Stand still, I'll release. Now obviously you're not going to every time you spray your horse do four sprays at a time and let them stand. But this is our starting point. That they learn that the pressure comes off when they stand. And then we can continuously increase that pressure. And by that I mean increase the length of time we apply the pressure stimulus. See, I'm not holding him in place. If I'm trying to hold him, that's not going to be an honest expression that he is accustomed to. And right now, he's looking like he tolerates the spray. We want to get to the point where he accepts it completely. So the reason I say he's tolerating his heads up, he's still a little concerned, but he's standing still. I just picked up the, the rope there because he was trying to yank on me and I went straight back to this rope. And not to spray fly spray onto the face in case you get the eyes, so I spray it onto my hand, put it onto the horse. You can use a sponge if you don't want to get it on your hand. At this stage, if a horse straight up is head shy, I'd work on that. He's pretty good about it. What I would do with the horse that's head shy is the same principle. I would go to get as close to the ears as they would let me. When they don't yank away, then I'd take off the pressure.
one thing that I've seen consistently with him is this step back, getting me out of zone three. We spoke about the zones. He doesn't want me standing on the ground in zone three. I've got a major problem with riding. He might let me sit there, but when I apply pressure for forward, I'm going to have trouble. So I've really got to get used to me standing in this zone a lot. Way before I ever get to getting on him, I want to be able to work in this zone. Um, one of the things that we'll introduce as we're going through, we'll probably have him work over poles, sending over, walking over stuff, stopping the pole in zone three. But a lot of just me hanging over him, I'll work off a fence, get him used to me being in zone three. You'll notice I am not panicking about his foot being around that rope, and I don't mind my rope being on the ground. I'm aware of my rope. It is my responsibility to know where my rope is and it is his responsibility to not get his feet tangled in it. So you often see people, especially from more conventional train of thinking, um, or you can't have a horse, uh, the, the rope on the ground, the horse might get it around his feet and freak out. We're going to work that they don't freak out about it. Okay, on this side, I'm going to start again. Remember, horses do not necessarily transfer what they've learned from that side to this side. Um, so I want to do everything equally. And I'm going to expect him to be as worried about this side as he was about that side to start off with. I might be pleasantly surprised and he'll, surprised and he'll transfer, but I'm not going to take it for granted. Keep it going rhythmically until he stands. Note I'm not holding it though. I'm staying pretty close to the shoulder so you can't try and barge me out of the way of that side. Keep it now this is not just about fast spread. The fact that he's resistant on this side, me getting this right starts applying to everything I'm going to do with him on this side. Him trying to defend this side and learning that he doesn't get a release by running around and trying to knock me over with his head is going to apply to everything I do. So it's not just about fly spray, it's about him accepting me on this side. So there he's standing and I don't take that to mean that he has accepted this now because his head is turned away from me. He's kind of tight. I'm going to start again. He stood still, so I took it to six sprays and released. And there's a lick and chew. So remember the lick and chew means that he came out of his flight, flight mode part of the brain, the sympathetic nervous system, and what goes into the parasympathetic nervous system. The reason that happens, the lick and chew, is when they're in flight mode, the sympathetic nervous system, certain organs shut down. One of those organs is the salivary glands. So when they are under pressure and not thinking but just reacting, they're not producing saliva. The minute they release that pressure and understand, their saliva comes back and they lick and chew. So that is why we talk about it, them it's showing that they learn something. Um, it's probably a little bit of an anthropomorphism we're applying how things work for us to them but it's a pretty clear link neurologically that, that they have now learned and accepted something when they're licking chew. They've released the pressure of that stimulus. Okay, I'll start again. Okay, so he's still tightening but he's standing and I've gone longer. If he takes a step back I'll start again. Went four. So these dwell times, besides it giving them time to process what they think, what they're learning, it also, we can give them a rub so they don't just think we have to throw all the scary stimulus at them. So 
as I move into zone three, start moving back again. Stand still, I'm going to give a release. I'm not going to push that too far just yet because it's not as good in zone three as it is in zone two. Paying attention to these little things with something as menial as a fly spray is going to give us a plan forward that I know now that when I get to throwing the saddle pad on or the saddle, from this side it's going to be a worry. And yes, we throw the saddle on from both sides. In fact, I do my taking up from this side, so I need this side to be good. I'm going to need to be able to mount from both sides. So getting this good and understanding that he's got issues about zone three gives me extra work to put in on this side. I'm not going to drill it. I'm going to work it equally, but I'm going to be aware that I'm not going to get myself bucked off the first time I climb onto this side. Uh, and my ability to ride bucks is greatly reduced lately because of the fact that I put in the effort to not get bucks. So I don't have regular rodeos, so I avoid getting bucked off. <laughs> So we are going to film this again after a few days of having this repetition and you'll see that he'll start to tolerate it and then accept it. So some people might argue that well, you know, we, have, we understand the health aspect, they need to have fly spray to stop ticks, because this fly spray works for ticks, flies and biting, biting flies. So why, why don't you just sponge it on? We want, of course, to use these stimuluses, um, as many new stimuluses as we can find. So that no matter what comes up, we address these little worries in certain zones. You might ride through a sprinkler at some point, and that's a rhythmic spraying, or of course get splashed. At the end of the day, we, want them, we don't want to avoid things that they don't like. We want to help them through it. And that establishes leadership for us. So, like, well, that stimulus scared me, and that he got me through it. Any new stimulus that comes up, that happens after about 10, 20 new stimuluses. They're like, that guy's got good ideas, he's going to keep me safe. Okay, that's it for the fly spray. Now I'm going to 